Welcome back. In our service earlier, we thought a little bit about being sure of our faith and how being sure of our faith helps us to defeat the anxiety which is so prevalent in these dark and difficult days. Dwelling on that a bit further, can I suggest to you that it's during the storms of life that God can strengthen or grow our faith. But only if we allow him to. And it's so important to remember that when we exercise the muscle of our faith, we please God. In Hebrews chapter 1 we read, Without faith it's impossible to please God. So that the corollary of that must be that exercising faith, trusting God, pleases him. Brings a smile to his face, causes God pleasure. We love it when our children trust us, when uh, we see that trust at work in their young lives. And God is the same. He's pleased when we demonstrate our faith in him. He loves to see our faith develop and grow and flourish. But for that to happen, we have to want it. We have to allow God to do it in our lives. Matthew 9 verse 29 records the words of the Lord Jesus. According to your faith, it will be done to you. What are you and I expecting God to do in our lives? Those uh, words of Jesus in Matthew 9 were spoken to two blind men. They'd been following Jesus along the road, calling out to him, have mercy on us. Son of David, have mercy on us. And when Jesus stopped in a house along the way, they followed him into the house and Jesus said to them, do you believe that I'm able to do this? The two men replied, yes, Lord. Then Jesus touched their eyes and said, according to your faith, be it done to you. At which point their eyes were opened and they could see. Their faith was a confidence in Jesus' ability and their readiness to let him work according to his purpose and plan in their lives. How God works in our circumstances, of course, is his business. But his working seems always to be in response to faith. It's the law of expectation and it demonstrates how important our faith is. Do you and I expect God to work in our lives? Do we want our lives to count for his kingdom and his glory? then we must allow him to grow our faith. Now, assuming we want that, and I certainly want that, let's go back to our subject this morning, allowing God to grow our faith. And we ask the question, how do we grow in faith? We're not the first believers to ask Jesus to grow our faith. In Luke 17, the disciples came to Jesus and they said to him, Lord, increase our faith. 
They felt they'd like to have more faith. If that's what pleases God, then that's what they wanted. But were they ready for the answer to that question and what it might imply? Are we? How does God grow our faith if we want him to do that? He does it by testing us. By putting our faith to the test. Faith is like a muscle. It develops and grows as it's stretched and pulled and tested. In the book of James, chapter 1, we read, Consider it pure joy whenever you have trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete not lacking in anything. Okay, let's get practical. How does God go about this testing? Let me share with you just two of the ways in which God tests our faith to strengthen and to develop it. And you'll see why this word this morning is so relevant to the days in which we are living. First way in which he strengthens, grows our faith is through difficulties, through difficulty. In 1 Peter verses 6 and 7, the apostle Peter wrote to the persecuted believers of his day And he said this, in this you greatly rejoice, though now for a while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trial. These have come so that your faith of greater worth than gold may be proved genuine and may result in praise, glory and honour when Jesus Christ is revealed. Our faith in God is tested, perhaps as never before, when we face difficulties. Loss of a job. Breakdown in health. Loss of a loved one. Yet nothing ever happens by accident in the life of the believer. Everything, as Rick Warren puts it, is father filtered. I love that. Father filtered. I'm not saying that God plans all the bad things that happen to us. Of course he doesn't. He's a good and loving father. He didn't send coronavirus to this world to judge the world, to kill thousands of innocent people. What I'm saying is that nothing comes in to the life of the believer without God's permission. Often, though, he will use a problem, a difficulty, to test our faith, to strengthen our faith. Sometimes he may even custom alter the problem Uh, for our benefit, to strengthen our faith. Think for a moment about the Old Testament story of Jonah. He was a human, he, he was a Hebrew believer, a prophet whom God used to bring the message of his love and salvation. But one day God called him to go to a foreign city called Nineveh. His mission was to warn the people there of God's judgment on their wickedness. Jonah wasn't happy about this mission at all. Go to a foreign sinful people? No way, Lord. 
and so he ran away in the opposite direction. He got on a boat in Joppa and uh, sailed away in the opposite direction to Nineveh. But God sent a huge storm which threatened to wreck the ship and uh, to cause all on board to perish. And in desperation, but not, uh, not, not without Jonah's consent, the sailors threw Jonah overboard. After that, the storm died down and the ship and all on board, except Jonah, were saved. God's overruling of all that was happening caused a great fish to swallow Jonah. And Jonah remained secure but locked down in the belly of that fish for three days and three nights. What a test of Jonah's faith. How would he react? From inside the fish, Jonah called out to God for help. And he testifies later, when my life was ebbing away, I remembered you, Lord, and my prayer rose to your holy temple. What I have vowed I will make good. Salvation comes from the Lord. In Jonah 2, verse 10, almost like a massive understatement, the record of Scripture says, And then the Lord commanded the fish, and it vomited Jonah onto dry land. What a test of Jonah's faith those days had been. What a wonderful God Jonah's faith was based on. What a lesson Jonah had learned. What a blessing he had received. How much his faith was strengthened. So much so that when the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time to go to Nineveh, he obeyed God's voice and went in the strength that God gave him. Jonah had been locked down in the body of the fish for three days and nights, frightened, alone, facing death. When would it all end? But his faith in God never wavered. His prayers were answered and his faith was strengthened. What a lesson for you and me as we face these dark and difficult days. Our faith can grow during difficult and testing times if we allow God to do his work in our lives as Jonah did. Secondly, our faith can grow through delay. I know it's hard to accept, but it's true nonetheless that our faith can grow through delay in answered prayer. It's another way in which, if we allow him, God can grow and strengthen our faith in him, our trust in him. If every prayer was answered immediately, if every need was met, if every problem was instantly solved, we wouldn't need faith. But it's not that way, is it? We have to wait. And we hate it, don't we? Are you impatient like me? I'm drawing up towards the traffic lights. There are two cars in front of me. The lights are red. And I 
try to decide which of the cars in front of me will get away first. And so I sort of slow up and stop behind that particular car. We hate traffic. We hate waiting. We hate waiting in the doctor's surgery. We hate waiting in the supermarket queue. A large part of our lives is spent waiting. We're having to wait at the moment for the lockdown to be released. And it's frustrating, isn't it? We've got a medical or a financial or a relationship problem which we've prayed about so often, but we're having to wait for the answer. We have to learn that God often delays the answer to our prayers in order to grow our faith, our trust in him and his timing and his purposes and his plan. God says, don't give up. Trust me. I've heard you. I'm testing your faith. I love you. My plans for you are good plans. Plans to grow your faith, to prosper you, not to harm you, to give you hope and a good future. Be patient. Trust me. I know what I'm doing in your life. Allow me to grow your faith through the difficult times and through the delays, because without faith... It's impossible to please God, but with faith we can give him pleasure. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we love you. We want to please you. We want our lives to count for your kingdom and your glory. Help us to heed your word to us this morning. Strengthen our faith. Help us in our unbelief. Help us, Lord, to allow you to test us. Help us as delays occur in our prayers being answered to trust you. Fill us with your Spirit. Help us to bear the fruit of the Spirit's presence in our lives. Help us to become more and more like Jesus, we pray in his name and for his glory. Amen. Amen, God. Bless you. Thank you for watching and listening this morning.